are all those people? <laughs> Who are you? She's a frustrated little bean. <laughs> Hello, Booktube. <laughs> She's a frustrated little bean because she really cannot handle the heat. And it's hot today. And yet she doesn't acknowledge that fact. She's still a puppy. Ew, what is this? This weird reflection going on there. What is that? I don't know. Well, anyway. Uh, it's not the least, it's not, it's not the worst visual you'll get on this channel. She, she's frustrated, the little bean, because she uh, wants to keep going when it's too, it's too warm. She wants to keep going when she's overheating, and that's the characteristic of the young. <laughs> I, must, I must be the bad guy uh, on our walks when it's warm. The, the, the uh, weather that I'm looking at now, it looks to me like a storm system is going to move in this afternoon. Uh, if it's like the last 10 storm systems here, it won't actually produce any precipitation, but it will be a front change, so that today will be 20 degrees hotter than tomorrow will be. We shall see. I definitely owe her a longer walk. <laughs> but anyway, uh, welcome to your daily penguin. Uh, I've got the, the uh, little electric fan on in the background. I'm wondering if that's cutting into the sound here. Should we turn that off? See if that makes it any better? Uh, not that it's just I'm substituting one kind of droning for another. <laughs> this is this is our tour through my Penguin Classic wall, uh, book by book, author by author, era by era, and uh, we never know what we're going to encounter. We've been encountering a lot of poetry lately, and that's true today as well. A poetry anthology that really needs no introduction, or maybe it does. Maybe nowadays everything needs an introduction, but once upon a time this was absolutely standard. Once upon a time you could walk into the most book poor house anywhere in England, and you would find a copy of this. This is Francis Turner Palgrave. This is the Golden Treasury, uh, which was he he brought it out in uh, 1861, and it is the living. It's a poetry anthology of lyrical and pastoral poetry, and it is the living embodiment, almost a caricature, of the incredible, fatal, morbid fascination that the Victorian era had with sentimentality. Uh, this is this is uh, exquisitely chosen. I mean, it's it's very well balanced. Uh, Palgrave was n was no different than any of his country people when it came to that gigantic vein of sentimentality. So that's what all of this is. It's my fair nymph and my my sweet Chloe and the the winds and the trees and the the rivers and the streams and the whatnot. And if a little of that goes a long way with you, well, and you've never encountered the Golden Treasury, then. Uh, you should be warned. Although, uh, if you have encountered the Golden Treasury, you have probably encountered it in a different form than this. This Penguin Classic is edited just, it's just another fantastic editing job by Christopher Ricks. And it's a scholarly version of the Golden Treasury, which you might not encounter. The Golden Treasury, as far as I know, is still going strong. It's still updated, regularly updated. There are beautiful gift editions and whatnot that, that uh, where the contents have largely changed. So it's possible that you know this title without knowing this book. And this edition, bless Penguin Classics for forgetting the Christopher Ricks edition of this original, the original one. Paul Grave came out with a, a second edition uh, just after he died. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was, uh, this thing was met with just uh, rapturous approval. In the 1861 version was met with rapturous approval. Everybody approved of it. Every, all the critics praised it. It sold like griddle cakes. It was just amazing. Uh, because you won't find anything unpleasant in it. You won't find anything challenging in it. Uh, and if you like that, a lot of people like that about their poetry. That's why greeting card poetry exists. Uh, if you like that, then you're going to love this. Because this is there are all sorts of uh, really good choices in here. I. I myself have uh, a few quibbles with a few of the picks that Paul Grave made, but one way or another, the the reason, the principal reason why I still have this, I would never, under ordinary circumstances, if I got a gift version, for instance, of of the Golden Treasury, I would never, under any circumstances, keep it. The reason that I kept this is not because it's a Penguin Classic; it's because it's one of those great Penguin Classics, a great edition of a work, where Hicks uh, dives into the critical reception, the the 
the history of the work, and he does it in a really good way, a really a way that isn't often enough done, in my opinion. When you start the golden, the Penguin Golden Treasury, you are starting right with the book. It just goes, it just goes straight to the book. The preface for the book is the preface that was on the book when it came out. You go straight to the book. Christopher Hicks reserves his commentary for the end, for, for after you've read The Golden Treasury. I think probably rightly stressing the fact that you don't need him to enjoy this, if you're going to enjoy it. If you want to both enjoy it and learn more about it, well, then you can, you can see him when you're done reading the, the, the poems in here. And I like that. Uh, I, I like that as an experience. It puts, the, it puts the Golden Treasury first and foremost in a way that editors are often tempted not to do because it's such a historical curiosity. This first one, this 1861 one, is so such a historical curiosity that editors right away feel the itch to get in and start explaining <laughs> and contextualizing. And, and uh, Ricks resists that urge, which is really nice. Uh, and I want to give you an... Uh, an example, just one, just one among many here. This is uh, Thomas Hood. Just one among many examples of the kinds of poems uh, that you will get in here. They're all sentimental. They're all uh, heavy with natural imagery. Uh, this one is uh, the deathbed. They're also heavy with that kind of uh, serious mortuary attitude. This is extreme. In other words, an extremely Victorian anthology. <laughs> extremely, which is why I'm glad that that Hicks had the idea to study it seriously and that Penguin reprinted that edition. But this is the deathbed. This is the sort of thing you're going to get here. Uh, we watched her breathing through the night, her breathing low, soft and low, as in her breast the wave of life kept heaving to and fro. So silently we seemed to speak, so slowly moved about, as we had lent her half our powers to eke her living out. Our very hopes belied our fears, our fears our hopes belied, we thought her dying when she slept, and sleeping when she died. For when the morn came dim and sad and chill with early showers, her quiet eyelids closed, and she had another morn than ours. Uh, that's just terrific, I think, and I have a similar... Uh... <laughs> Okay, the book market here is from Paperback Booksmith. They don't exist anymore. Uh, they were wonderful. They were a chain of bookstores here in America, and they were wonderful. And they gave out these, just these free bookmarks that had Paperback Booksmith on the front. Often they had, okay, this one has, okay, yeah, their, their, their tagline was dedicated to the fine art of browsing, which I think is gone from bookstores now. Uh, but the back of the book, the, their bookmark, see, this is old. I've had this forever. The back of their bookmark was blank. So that you could make notes and whatnot, and I often did. I often, if I was if I was using a paperback booksmith bookmark in a book, and I came across something that I wanted, I would write it down on the bookmark, and I did on this. This is Patrick White, the author Patrick White. Uh, I am constantly meeting ladies who say, "How lovely it must be to write," as though one sat down at the escritoire after breakfast and it poured out like a succession of bread on buttered letters instead of being dragged out by tongs, a bloody mess in the small hours. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I put that in this volume, but, uh, but I myself, uh, that the deathbed there is, I think, lovely in a very simple way, very straightforward way, and I, uh, I find that a lot throughout the original Golden, Golden Treasury. That's another reason. I, I might not have kept it, but that, I do appreciate it for what it is, in, the, in a lot of the same ways that I do the original Oxford Book of English Verse the Quiller Cooch edition. And uh, as long as I'm on that subject, to, to round out here, I will repeat an urging in a perfect world. Of course, we're not in a perfect world now, but in a perfect world, what I would love to see is Penguin do a, the same thing with the, that they did with the Golden Treasury with a bunch of other anthologies, a bunch of other great anthologies. And one of them would certainly be the Oxford Book of English Verse, the, the first edition of the Oxford Book of English Verse, tremendously influential. Why not have a Penguin Classic of it? Get somebody to do a, a version just like this. Carefully annotated, carefully edited as a historical document. I would love that. Uh, but I'll take this. <laughs> I'll take this. So that is your Penguin Classic for today. It's, once again, a guarded recommend. You have to like this kind of thing. And this kind of thing is decidedly out of favor now. So you might not automatically like it. So you have to like this kind of thing because you're, you're not going to get any variation. A lot of poetry anthologies nowadays will give you a lot of variation. You're not going to get any variation in this book. It's all a, very much on the same note of nature-heavy sentimentality. So if you like that, 
you're going to get that in this. And of course, the whole history of this book, the reason it was such a mega hit, is because it did strike a chord. A whole bunch of people, it read its era perfectly. A whole bunch of people did like that. So, so in that sense, it's a recommend. It, it's not a recommend if you're going to this thinking, knowing only uh, what's a famous poetry anthology. And I like poetry anthologies now. You have to be very careful about that because it's a very specific themed poetry anthology. Uh, but that is it. That is your Daily Penguin for today. A warm day here in Boston. Very nice. Uh, and I'm going to uh, go and tend to my bean. <laughs> but I will be back. Thank you, Book 2.